Hey there, CT Tinker here. The last two months I've been working with Google's Media Pipe on real-time motion tracking in Blender. And finally, it's ready to release the beta. Featuring pose, face and hand detection, the toolset focuses on character animation. Blend AR mocap ain't perfect by any means and I will update it in the future, but I hope it serves as a useful tool already. And there's another thing, to be completely honest with you, about a year ago I've decided to make somewhat of an invest. I've been looking at my saved up money and thought, well let's try to get independent and it's been a blast. Getting about 7000 users of Blender Track from all over the world is just awesome. So thanks to all of you. And while it's been a great experience, I'm getting in the reds. So from now on you can support me on Patreon and I hope some of you do it so I can keep developing for the community. Now enough of that. Let's check out how to set up Blend AR mocap so you can get your hands on it. As the add-on requires camera permissions, you got to start Blender with enhanced privileges. On Windows that's fairly easy, just right click the application and choose run as administrator. Consider to toggle the system console so you can see what's going on in the background. On Apple you have to start Blender using the command line, but that's not scary at all. Just navigate to your Blender executable, which is usually located in the Applications folder by typing cd applications blender content macOS, and then type the command sudo dot slash blender to execute the application. On Linux you also got to start the application using the command line, while I guess Linux users are more used to that. The Blender executable is usually in the users bin, so just type cd user bin and then run the command sudo dot slash blender. Once Blender has been started with enhanced privileges, you can start to set up the add-on. To do so, navigate to edit, preferences, add-ons and press the install button. Then navigate to the location at which you have saved the add-on and press the install button. If you aren't redirected directly, just search for Blend AR mocap and then activate it by pressing the checkbox. When you are done, don't forget to press the Install Dependencies button. This will install the packages OpenCV and MediaPipe, which are required to use the add-on. Check your system console while the installation process, as it might take a while depending on your internet connection. Once the packages are installed, you will find the add-on panel in the 3D View side panel, which you can open by pressing N. After installing the packages, I recommend to restart Blender and start it again with enhanced privileges. But from now on it's fairly straightforward. Just press the Start Detection button to give it a go. Doing so, a window opens containing your webcam's camera feed and the detection results. So far I've been focusing on the finger angles and the general hand up and down side rotation. To finish the detection, just press the Q, Escape or right mouse button. Now let's check out the face tracking. So far I've managed to transfer the head rotation, the chin's X angle and the opening and closing of eyes and mouth. The empties will contain the global vertex position of Google's Canon Yale face mesh and also approximate rotation and distance data which will later be used to drive the face rig. Let's head over to the pose detection. As you can see my 2.3 GHz dual core laptop has quite a struggle to keep up, but it runs. The trick is just to move slowly. Your faster machine probably will deliver better results. Here I've managed to transfer the chest and hip rotation and the arm position and hand orientation. As the legs are floating like crazy I've decided to not introduce them in the final transfer. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Maybe there is a way to clean up the leg tracking results? Now let's check out what we've got. You probably got to zoom in a little then you will see the mass of empties the add-on has created. Let's focus on transferring the data. If you don't have Richify enabled, enable it. Just navigate to Edit Preferences add-on, search for Richify and I have enabled it already, so let's move on. At first let's create a Richify meta rig. These bones usually get aligned to your character, but I skip this process here and directly navigate to the Object Data Properties panel and press the Generate Rig button. This usually takes some time till it's generated, so be patient. Now I am just hiding the meta rig so the scene doesn't get cluttered and then I activate the bones of the generated rig. To make the bones even more visible, 
I change the viewport display from wire to solid. Transferring, or I could also call it linking the data, is fairly easy. Just select your generated rig you want to transfer to and a driver collection. I'm starting with the hand drivers. Then press the start transfer button. This will create a link between the rig and the drivers using constraints. So you only have to transfer once. Let's do the same with the face collection. And there we go. Finally, transfer the pose collection. As you can see, there is some scratching and I will try to fix this, but for now you got to clean up the data a bit. Let's focus on the face at first. Here I recognize the mouth is too wide open by default, so just select the lower lip and move it up a notch. I think this looks way better. The left hand seems to um, have a false rotation assigned, so I'm just selecting the IK driver and rotate it until it fits. Also, as you can see, you can still use basically all of the ridge if I choose. So far, the arms cannot be just moved around if something gets falsely assigned. And the reason for this is simple. As you can see, I'm using multiple constraints to link the IK bone to my custom driver data. And on the arms, the copy location constraint isn't offsetable. You could try to change up the influence of the constraint, but that may not work in all cases. For example, if the arms are too close or if the stretching only appears at one axis. So let's check out how to change up the driver, because this will always work. The target of the constraint is the hand IK driver, and we got to change up some values in the driver to fix the scratching. The purple color shows that the value is actually driven by an expression, which of course can be changed. Just right click it and choose edit driver. The first value is the relative offset from the shoulder, so this usually should be right. The second value is a custom multiplier based on the arm bone chain length compared to the post detection result arm chain length. So this multiplier sometimes have some issues. So let's change it up. And okay, well, this was way too much, so here we go again. And this seems of okay, so of course you can change every axis individually, which will make sense in some cases. The right arm seems to have even more stretching issues, so let's target that one for now. I'm only changing the driver set position, because it seems to do the job just fine. And now I'm also changing the elbow driver set position to match it. And yet to finish it off, I've decided to bring the hand down a tiny bit lower, till it seems to fit. Of course you can consider to change the rigify arm bones to non-stretch, which will probably make sense in this process, but I skipped that for now. And of course I would love to see your results, and I would appreciate if you linked them to me. So have fun with Blend AR mocap and see you around.